Hello, my name is Francisco Mesa, and in this presentation, I'm going to talk about the development of new stainless steel buckling curves for column members, which are going to be included in the new American AISC stainless steel design specification. The development of these new buckling curves had been the result of a collaboration between Nancy Badu and myself from the Steel Construction Institute and Professor Leo Garner from Imperial College London. So to put things into context, it is important to know that before 2013, there were no rules in the United States for designing welded or hot rolled stainless steel members. And as a result of this, it was very difficult for engineers to design stainless steel structures. The only design standard in the US at that time was ASC-8, which was specifically for cold form stainless steel. In 2010, AISC commissioned the Steel Construction Institute to develop a design guide for stainless steel structures, which resulted in the publication in 2013 of AISC Design Guide 27. This design guide included rules for hot rolled and welded open sections, such as I-shaped members, channels, and equal leg angles, as well as rectangular and round hollow structural sections, all of them with thickness larger than three millimeter. The design guide also included rules for design of welded and bolted connections and covered aspects uh, related to material behavior and grade selection, as well as fabrication. Even though the publication of the AISC Design Guide 27 contributed towards making it easier for engineers to design structures made of stainless steel in the US, the fact that the design guide lacked legal status meant that engineers still needed to seek special approval in order to design stainless steel structures. In addition to that, the design rules given in the AISC Design Guide 27 were limited and somehow conservative due to the lack of research at the time. For this reason, in 2018, work started at the Steel Construction Institute to draft the new AISC specification for structural stainless steel buildings. Luckily for me, this coincided with the year I joined the SCI after completing my PhD here at the University of Sheffield. So I was asked to help Nancy Badu with the drafting of AISC 370. Imperial College were also uh, on the AISC committee and played an active role in developing some of the design provisions. The publication of AISC 370 is expected to be at the end of this year. Another important thing to mention is that, as well as the development of the new AISC 370, a substantial revision of ASC 8 has also been carried out in parallel, and publication is expected to be in 2022. Regarding AISC 370, this specification gives design rules for austenitic and duplex stainless steel alloys. Ferritic alloys are not covered. AISC 370 also covers precipitation hardening alloys for tension members and fasteners. The design rules included in AISC 370 are more accurate and comprehensive than those originally included in the first edition of AISC Design Guide 27, partly due to the significant amount of research carried out on stainless steel between 2013 up until now. In fact, the design rules included in AISC 370 are largely based on the same research which has been conducted for the development of the second generation of the stainless steel Eurocode. And therefore, in many instances, the hard work of those who have contributed to the development of the stainless steel Eurocode is also reflected in the new AISC 370. The scope of AISC 370, as well as its design approach, is aligned as much as possible to that in AISC 360, which is the equivalent AISC specification for the design of structures made of traditional carbon steel. And those familiar with AISC 360 will notice that the list of chapters 
I am showing here is almost identical to the list of chapters in AISC 360. In this presentation, I'm going to be focusing on the rules for compression members and more specifically for the column buckling curves. So for carbon steel, AIC 360 only prescribes one buckling curve, irrespective of the cross-sectional geometry of the column. The strength against global buckling is obtained by multiplying the critical stress, FCR, by the gross area or defective area, uh, depending on whether the column is susceptible to local buckling or not. For carbon steel columns, the curve that defines the global buckling stress is composed of two parts depending on the ratio of the yield stress fy and the euler stress fe if we consider that the column slenderness is defined at the square root of the ratio of fy and fe we can plot the global buckling stress as a function of the column slenderness as shown in this figure for column slenderness of less than 1.5 Global buckling is inelastic, and in this case, the strength of the column is significantly affected by partial yielding, residual stresses, and the column initial out of strikeness. For column slenderness greater than 1.5, global buckling is elastic, and as we can see here, the global buckling stress is closely related to the Euler stress. An important feature of the carbon steel global buckling curve is that it gradually approaches the yield strength as the column slenderness decreases. This means that all columns designed according to AISC 360 are susceptible to global buckling, irrespective of their column slenderness. This is different from the European approach for carbon steel and stainless steel columns, where all columns have a yield plateau. For stainless steel, AISC 370 will give three curves, as we can see in this figure. The highest curve is for rectangular hollow sections. The next one is for welded or hot crawled eye section, buckling about the major axis and circular hollow sections. And the third curve is for welded or hot rolled eye sections, buckling about the minor axis and any other type of sections. The same curve is used for austenitic and duplex alloys which is the same as in the stainless steel Euro code. As we can see in this slide, there are clear similarities between the equations used to define the stainless steel global buckling curves and those used in AIC 360. However, there are a few differences which are worth mentioning. The first difference is that in this case, we have replaced some of the constant coefficients used in the carbon steel buckling curve with symbols such as beta zero, beta one, and beta two. This is so that we can use the same equations to define the three different buckling curves. You will notice, however, that the coefficients are different from those for carbon steel due to the difference in material behavior. For example, the reduction coefficient used in the definition of elastic global buckling is lower for stainless steel buckling curves than for the carbon steel buckling curve. Also, the transition between elastic and inelastic buckling occurs at a higher column slenderness for stainless steel columns. Another important difference is that the stainless steel buckling curve include a yield plateau. This is to recognize that at short column slenderness, stainless steel columns show higher resistance than equivalent carbon steel columns due to the beneficial effect of strength hardening. Having a gel plateau also allows compatibility with the continuous strength method, which is also included in AISC 370 as an alternative design method. As some of you might know, the continuous strength method permit achieving design resistances that go beyond the gel load. However, this method can only be used when the resistance of the column is not governed by global buckling. Another important difference between the stainless steel curves and the carbon steel curve is that in the inelastic range, the stainless steel column curves make use of an exponential coefficient alpha. The introduction of this coefficient allow more flexibility in terms of the shape of the buckling curve and therefore permitted us to develop buckling curves that agree with the test and numerical predictions more closely.
we carry out the same type of reliability analysis which was used in the development of the carbon steel buckling curve included in AISC 360, targeting a reliability index of 2.6 and a resistance factor of 0.9 adjusted for carbon steel. We used the weighted average yield strength in all the calculations. We only consider uh, cross sections not susceptible to local buckling in order to eliminate its effect on the, from the result, and we divided the data into three groups depending on their slenderness. This figure compares the proposed buckling curve for stainless steel rectangular hollow sections against the experimental and numerical data available. The figure also shows the corresponding new uh, Eurocode curve. This is a similar figure, but for circular hollow sections. And this is for I sections buckling about the major axis. We can see that for some column slenderness, the proposed curve offer slightly higher resistances than the Eurocode curve. This is because the Eurocode curve has been developed based on specific values of the imperfection factor and plateau length. For example, in this case, the plateau length of the proposed curve is slightly larger than in the European curve. This is because for the European curves, the plateau length is taken as either 0 0.2, 0 0.3 or 0 0.4, while for the proposed curve, we were free to choose any value in between. Finally, this figure compares the column curve for buckling of I sections about the minor axis. One thing to mention about this curve is that in the end, we decided not to include this curve in AISC 370, and instead we included the slightly lower curve indicated by the dashed line, which was proposed by Ichaso Arayago and Kim Rasmussen for core form stainless steel sections, which are covered in ASC 8. The reason for including that curve and not this one was to achieve some level of alignment between the two standards and also given that this curve is going to be used for any type of cross-section not covered by the other buckling curves it was this, it was considered prudent to use a lower curve with this i conclude my presentation but before finishing i would like to draw your attention to the next stainless steel experts seminar which will be held in london in september 2022 thank you for your attention